I think we are live now. <clears throat> Good evening, uh, everyone. Uh, as you probably know, I'm Dr. V. Mohan, chairman of Dr. Mohan's Diabetes Speciality Center and chief diabetologist at our center. I'm also the president and director of the Madras Diabetes Research Foundation. As part of this series of uh, conversation, live conversation with Dr. V. Mohan series, uh, we have been having these uh, Facebook live programs, which have been going on quite regularly, either on a Friday or more recently on a Saturday evening at uh, 7 p.m. So today it's a great pleasure for me to introduce a very special guest whom I have for you today, Ms. Nupur Lalwani. Uh, so to describe about uh, Nupur is difficult because she combines so many things. She wears so many hats, but I think her official designation, I can say that she's a founder and director of the Blue Circle Foundation. And she'll tell you what Blue Circle Foundation, for those of you who don't know, the Blue Circle represents diabetes. This is something which the International Diabetes Federation came up with some time ago, just like you have the uh, red ribbon for uh, uh, you know breast cancer and stuff like that. You have the blue circle. If you have just a blue ring, it, it means diabetes. And so her foundation is called as the Blue Circle Foundation, but that's not the only thing uh, that uh, Nupur does. The reason why uh, she's here today is to talk to us and to talk to people like you who may be watching, who may have type 1 diabetes or other forms of diabetes. Uh, so Nupur, uh, as I understand it, um, first of all, welcome to the show. And thank you, thank you so much for being here. Uh, so I understand uh, from what you have, uh, we have never met, in fact, I've not met uh, Nupur. It's only uh, through virtually that I have uh, met uh, Nupur. But I've been very inspired watching the, all the things that she does. And you'll be amazed when I tell you what are all the range of activities that she does. But to cut a long story short, I think Nupur at the age of eight was diagnosed to have type one diabetes. And since then, there's been no looking back for her. She has finished almost a quarter of a century with the type one diabetes and she's managing extremely well, as she herself will tell you. So tell us about that story to start with, Nupur. About the oh, day you died, thank you. what happened and everything. Over to you. Thank you so much, Dr. Mohan. It's an absolute privilege to be here on your show. I've been watching all the previous episodes as well and uh, amazing insights, you know. Um, I, I mean, there was so much to learn, even though I've had type 1 diabetes for 25 years. Uh, when you had the exam, when you had the um, conversation series about Modi, uh, there were a lot of things that I got to lo know that day. So uh, it's an honor to be here. Thank you for having me, sir. And um, um, so I've had, like Dr. Mohan mentioned, uh, type 1 diabetes since the last 25 years. And I was diagnosed uh, just before my third standard final exams. So it was a big shock to my family, um, of course, and uh, took me a while to understand what was happening. Uh, but I think um, I'm pretty you grateful. Dying, or, uh, for example, when Jazz was on the show, Jazz Sethi, she said, Yes. She was 1045. She was almost in a coma when she was diagnosed. How bad was Correct. it when it was diagnosed for you? What is Mine it? was 636. And uh, the I mean, I owe my um, second some 14 or 15 or something or at that uh, time. Yeah, was, sorry? Been, uh, HB1. Yeah, I, honestly, doctor, I we didn't even know the concept of HB1C at that point. I'm not even sure whether the, it was done or not. Um, okay. I just remember the sugar that diagnosis was 636 and um, i actually owe my uh, you know second innings if i can call it that to my parents my father um, so he was adamant uh, my parents are non medical you know the lay people and uh, my dad sort of had this sixth sense that you know maybe i have diabetes because i uh, would keep going to the washroom and um, he sort of felt um, he consulted with a few friends and spoke and, you know, people told him that kids don't get diabetes, don't be silly. Um, so he took me to a pathology lab and we checked the sugar there, local pathology lab next to my house. And uh, they came up with a negative report. They said hey, there's no sugar in the urine and there's nothing in the blood and it's totally okay. Oh my God. Um, I am I'm very grateful that my father did not believe that and, uh, you know, he actually got angry at them. He told them that, you know, I'm I'm 100%. Unbelievable. Yes, really friend telling him, no, no, you, she won't have diabetes and get it. Then he goes to a lab and the lab yeah. also says, no, no, they don't have. He's not a doctor. 
and you still yeah. believe i mean it's god sent i mean it's really god sent imagine really? you pursue that yeah yeah and uh, i mean probably if it were this day and age we would have you know uh, sued the, uh, the the pathology lab it was probably a smaller lab but uh, and then the second time when we did it um, my parents still have that report somewhere at home and you know they used whitener and they kind of covered up the uh, mistake and they said oh no she's diabetic gosh uh, so it was a big shock and my parents did not believe it uh, you know they they weren't um, sure what to do so we went to a second and a third pathology lab and that's when uh, we were convinced that something is wrong and we realized that you know I've got type 1 diabetes So no, it was a shocker. For just to so that we don't get miss this very very important point that you raised, this shows the importance of confirming and reconfirming. Sometimes when I tell patients, you know, you brought this report, but I would like to confirm it. They, you know, with all WhatsApp, uh, you know, fake news and all these WhatsApp things, you know, doctors are made out to be the worst criminals in this world, you know. So the moment we say that they think to make money, we are doing it. We we'll say it's not your money. Four hundred rupees for me is nothing to do a test again for you and so on. I can live without that. The point is that I'm making a lifelong diagnosis for you, and it's for you that I'm doing it. I want to make sure that it's absolutely right, especially if I have. I remember when when you mentioned this, there was a patient of mine with type one diabetes who was running a lab himself, oh, and there in his own lab it had come normal or something, and then another lab had given some high value, uh, but then he you know believed his own lab, and so but he still said let me take another third opinion, and so he really? came to, to my lab, and at that time his son didn't have much of symptoms, but when I checked it, it was extremely high. and the hbnc is also high and in his lab the previous day you know hbnc doesn't change for 3 months in his his Very lab report was 6.3 when i did it to 12 oh in fact when i repeated he told me why are you repeating it 6.3 i'm telling you it's 6.3 i said well if it's 6.3 it's good but then that means yeah. he doesn't have diabetes probably so i just want to check it it's your child mm. and i want to make sure for the next i'm like a judge sitting there giving a diagnosis like a life sentence or death sentence i'm giving i want to make sure of all the evidence that i have it's for your child's sake and then when I, it came as 12 point something he got the shock of his life then he said you mean to say my lab is wrong i said i don't want to say anything about your lab i'm telling you it is 12% now the rest of it you do what you want you know so sometimes these things you have to and really admire your father for you know taking that forward so continue yeah so um, then we got admitted um, at the sl raja hospital in mumbai and um, for me it, uh, honestly it made no difference not much difference i would say i was only stressed about the fact that my parents were you know uh, i could see them they were upset they were uh, confused they were um, i mean um, my younger sister was at the time around a year and a half old so they were dealing with taking care of an infant um, you know all of that and um, i couldn't understand why i had to be in the hospital and they, nobody was telling me anything yeah. and i kept asking them and uh, the first night went by and the second day um, you know my my parents they came to explain to me what has happened and um, they said you know what you've got something called type 1 diabetes and you have to take injections so i said okay that's fine uh, and then my mother said no you don't understand you have to take injections forever i said that's fine so they were surprised with my reaction and uh, it is the first time in my life that i saw both my parents uh, you know sobbing and crying and even though they did not want to break down uh, in front of me and they didn't um, you know they were uh, they thought i wasn't looking but uh, that that part uh, you know was hard for me i mean uh, to see my parents go through um, uh, something that was so upsetting it didn't matter to me that i had to take injections i was i was never scared of injections luckily as a child as well Wonderful. um so that that was fine but uh, i felt kind of guilty you know that uh, because of me my parents are uh, in distress about that conversation you were having with uh, ashok alexander just listening to that about feeling guilty he was talking about over protection that should not be yeah. there you should let children. so i mentioned this in couple of my other uh, you know facebook live interviews other people with uh, type 1 diabetes parental support is very important of course i mean when you hear that your child is having it any child any parent will break down and you have to be told lifelong you're to take insulin i'll break down even if i yeah. had uh, 
uh, even if I'm a diabetologist and if my child or grandchild had it, I mean, it's, it's heartbreaking at that particular point till you get into. So we call it as a, a cycle, you know, first is yes. denial. We say, no, this can't be mine. You know, this is wrong report. Exactly. Like the lab and wrong report. Then second report comes. It's correct. Oh, it's correct. Then shock, you know, is it really yes. true? Um, and then, uh, you know, uh, blaming everybody else. Is it because it took sweet last week that I got this or is it something else? Parents feel, is it because of us, some genes in our body gave it to a poor girl. So that will start blame game. All this will start. Then mm. only the acceptance comes, you know, after that. Mm. Then only after that, now next, what is to be done for that acceptance and then thing. So by the time you go through all that, some people move within one week, one week, one week, one week, third week, fourth week, they are, they are normal, you know, yeah. but some can take two years there, two years there, and at the end of five years, six years, they're still not accepting, they're still in denial, they're still, they're the people who don't do well, you know. Unfortunately, okay. we have to move on with whatever it is, we have to move on in life and okay, now we've got this, what next now, you know. That's the resilience that we talk about. Once you have that yes. resilience, then it becomes easy and the reason I'm saying it just now as you're talking, there may be somebody hearing now or to this recorded version later on, uh, which comes, as you know, now it's on YouTube as well as in Facebook is going on. So somebody who is listening will say, oh, we also went through the same thing, you know, then they're able to connect uh, better. Then you must have been, in, you said you were in third standard at that time. So yes. at that time, the next few years in school and so on, how difficult was it? It was uh, smooth sailing for me. It was stressful for my parents. Um, so my parents would take turns to come to school and, you know, make, uh, take, give my shot or be, be around and See, okay. just simply check in uh, once in a while that I was okay and uh, during exams I remember uh, doctor I would feel very embarrassed and the only it is a very silly reason um, and I still uh, you know I still uh, laugh about it with my parents uh, my father would come uh, with the tiffin box and uh, then my principal would come in the middle of the exam and 100 children are writing she would call my name and uh, I mean it was done with utmost love and care for me and I truly appreciate that but as a child, uh, in my mind, I felt sort of singled out, you know. And then mm -hmm. they would say, uh, go out and have your snacks. So, um, so many years ago also, my school was extremely supportive and uh, oh, nice wonderful. Yeah, so yeah. nice to hear that. Uh, the other day, who was talking and uh, Nish, Nish Amarnath was talking, uh, the author from, she's also yes. type 1 patient, she now lives in New York. And she was saying that they treated her, they didn't allow her anything in the school. They didn't give her any support. And she felt really lousy all day. And only when she left school, she felt she was normal. So different mm. schools react in, in different ways. And yes. so it also depends on the prior experience, you know, whether the school has had such children and so on. So, I mean, the principal has been so nice during an examination. Somebody they'll say, no, we don't allow all this. This is all not allowed and, and so on, thinking that you'll copy you going out or something is, in another way, you know. So these are all the challenges. And of course, see, you said you had a smooth sailing. Not all have a smooth sailing because you can have mm. a bully in the class. You can have somebody who's always taunting you, making you yes. feel an abnormal person. You have to inject this all the time. Imagine if somebody's telling you this every day, you know, then yeah. it becomes difficult even to go to school. If I go there, they're going to tell me about my insulin. They're going to tell me about this. I can't face them. I can't mm. think. So children stop going to school and so going on. So it all depends on, see, we are, you know, we are victims of circumstances. And so if we have this, we are very lucky if we have understanding parents, school, friends, this, that, then we are extremely lucky. Otherwise, that can be the worst torture, not the disease itself, but the stigma Correct. associated the stigma. with, the, you know, the bullying that they go on, the nagging, the bullying, and they make you feel miserable, you know. So we are try doing our best through the, project supported by the Hinduja Foundation, where we are supporting uh, uh, more than 600 children in India with type 1 diabetes, 250 at our center itself, where to each That's of wonderful. those children are going and creating some small booklets. I've sent you one today, yes, something yes. type 1 diabetes. So you can go through that. And so we are making that and kind of making it available to everyone. And then something for the schools also saying, this is type 1 diabetes, don't panic. Just keep some glucose and something available so that if the child has it, every school may have two, three or more type 1. See, those days, 10, 20 years ago, 25 years ago, you might have been the only child in the school with type 1. Yes. I don't know if anyone else was That's there. Right. You'd be surprised. Yeah, yeah, yeah. The prevalence has gone up. Every school will have one or two children with type 1 diabetes. That's become as common as, as that. Uh, so to, the awareness also is much more. You know? Much so, more. Very true. 
So what about your school uh, activity? Because I know you're a big athlete and all that. So did it start in school itself? Uh, the the running and the uh, oh. come to that. But then you're in school itself. Yeah. It must have been a sports person. Oh, uh, doctor! Honestly, in school, I I mean, I would take part in sports. I was on my school throwball team, and I used to take part in uh, you know the hundred, two hundred meters, uh, short putt, all of those things. Um, but I was not. Uh, I w- didn't have a major interest in sports in school. I was uh, um, pretty academically oriented. I would be uh, pretty much always in the top five in my class, um, b- even before T one, even after T one. So that kind of continued. Um, so. Uh, surprisingly the sports angle came in after school oh okay yeah that's another amazing uh, thing uh, so then if we fast forward uh, this you said you did your masters in english literature when did that happen so um, i come from a family where uh, my parents truly believe that you know uh, studies should not end you should yeah. keep studying so um, i started working after graduation Uh, at 21 but uh, my parents were very firm about the fact that you need to you know study just doing your graduation is absolutely not acceptable um so then i went on to do an mba i went on to do a masters in literature um and i did my masters in literature purely because i was passionate about the subject and it's something that i always wanted to do it wasn't something that was uh, you know uh, with the professional bent of mind that okay if i do it it will you know help me with a job or an appraisal I did it simply for the love of it. For passion and love of it, yeah. Yeah. Okay. MBA was in uh, where? Where did you MBA from? I did my MBA from NMIMS in Mumbai. Okay. You know what? Just now, as you're talking, I got an idea. <laughs> yeah. Tell <laughs> you that you should do a PhD. Yeah. You should do a PhD, <laughs> and it's quite easy to do it. You should do it on something related to type one diabetes through your Blue Circle uh, Foundation. Yeah. You can do it. and we'll yeah. find out where you can register and you should collect social data on type 1 diabetes things which people don't study at all and there could Correct. be numerous things diabetes distress quality of life there are hundreds of things which you can do and socio economic aspects of type 1 diabetes you can think of a topic and uh, remind yeah. me that uh, sometime yeah. we'll pursue this somehow i feel that definitely so doctor uh, ma and you have done mba and so on why can't you become dr nupur lalwani you should <laughs> you know uh, doctor i i must mention this so at home uh, we would you know my father would pull my leg and he would say that um, you know your i have a younger sister and uh, she just got into the phd course yeah you just told yes. me yeah. Yeah, yeah yeah so she got into uh, you, can do it. you can do it you can do it so <laughs> yeah so my father would always say that you know she the younger one is going to do it first so it yeah. was uh, struck yeah. me when you said mba and uh, masters in literature i said why can't you do you have got a scientific bend of mind and you said you know when i uh, picked that up and you said should continue yeah. study uh, so nothing is you're not uh, you know too old at all you can easily yeah. uh, do that and something which we can talk about maybe you can do on technology you can do on uh, pumps and you can find out how many are on pumps and how many find it easy and how many are managing and what is the level of a1c throughout india through all your uh, thing and there's so many so many aspects of it which yeah. we can We'll talk I'll definitely that. need your advice, doctor. I will definitely do that. Sounds like a wonderful idea. Yeah, I, I can do that. Uh, so now let's uh, go into your diabetes uh, thing uh, now before we get into other uh, things. Um, yes. So tell me about uh, your present because I've heard that uh, your uh, A one C is five point five, five point six. I'm getting a little jealous because I don't have diabetes <laughs> and my A one C is five point eight, five point nine. Of course, I'm much younger than I'm older than you. I'm double your age. but um, you know uh, this is remarkable i mean for, for somebody to have uh, a type 1 and then to have a1c below 6 is uh, kind of a dream thing in india very few people will be having that i know there are few but very few will be having it we talk of people having 8 9 10 11 12 you know and with type 1 diabetes and here you are with the uh, 5 5 uh, a1c uh, so i know you use a combination of things low carb diet yeah. and you pump and your libre and your mio mio and so on so why don't you tell us about what exactly you do how you got to that 5 5.5 and about your diet about your present exercise regimen from there from that exercise part you bring it last and from there we'll go on to your sports and marathon and stuff sure doctor so um i have to uh, you know um, sort of set the record straight in the sense that i was not always this way uh, in yeah. fact uh, 
in my uh, you know diabetes life it's only very recently that uh, i began to take charge of my own condition and take ownership you know like uh, people say that it's important to take ownership uh, for a long time and and there was nobody else to blame i mean i had support from parents uh, my sister doctors everything uh, but despite that um i as a person with lived experience of diabetes i can totally understand you know when um when you can't manage despite all the support at one point in 2001 uh, doctor my hba1c was uh, 12 and uh, that's the highest that it's been and i'm grateful to god uh, despite everything i've gone through i um, i'm here today without a single complication so um, probably that's luck probably i don't know what it is but uh, uh eventually you know uh, with while growing up and during my teenage years um, naturally i was um, i mean i would listen to my parents and everything but uh, somewhere you know that rebellious uh, streak comes in and you don't want to um, sort of comply with you know the instructions or with what's being told to you so uh, that phase was hard um, but in the last couple of years i've realized that if i don't take charge of my diabetes uh, the only one to suffer will be me i mean everyone else even if it is my most immediate family uh, they'll only be able to help me at, up until a certain point beyond that i have to live with the consequences and there will be nobody else to blame except myself right. um so i um, and i mean this might sound silly but um, fear was a great motivator for me you know uh, if it were not fear is not always a negative emotion um, i once um, sort of felt that you know um, um you know maybe my life is going to end my kidneys will uh, fail my eyesight will fail and and that somehow um, luckily for me it propelled me in in a positive way you know and then i decided okay enough is enough um, everyone has been trying to help me so far has been frustrated but it's time to take things in my hand and so i started uh, you know taking care of myself and it's been even uh, reaching the fives has been quite a journey i've been stuck at uh, hb1c of 6 for uh, you know a whole year and i was very frustrated because i knew i was doing everything right i was eating um, correctly i was checking my sugar you know 8 to 12 times a day on the glucometer when the libre came in i was using the libre i was trying my best uh, one of the turning points doctor has been um, so um, i got to know of dr richard bernstein through the internet um yeah. and um, he, he he lives with type 1 diabetes himself he's now in his late 80s um he got diagnosed in 1946 and um, as of today he has no complications the few um, complications that had begun in his uh, diabetic life he managed to reverse it with um, low carb okay. so um you know that sort of was a big inspiration and um, I chanced upon this information on the internet, and I ordered his book online. Um, and I remember around uh, four and a half years ago or so, I gifted this book to myself on my birthday. And it okay. was a heavy read. Um, you know, it was not uh, it was not simple or fast. It was a big book, and I'm and not. Yeah, it's a huge book. Yeah. 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 And book. I'm not. Correct, and uh, you know, um, um, as a lay person, I mean, I'm not a, I'm, I don't have a medical background, um, so to go through all of that information um, was it took a lot of time and effort, and and along with having a full time job and uh, you know regular things in life, I went through this. I began experimenting slowly, and uh, you know, with a lot of trial and error, I realized that. Um, I am able to implement, uh, you know, um, what he is recommending, which is eating around 30 grams of carbohydrate a day. Um, now I know, you know, food can be a controversial topic in the diabetes community, and some people say this is best, and some say that is best. Um, but I, I truly believe that uh, each one of us, you know, do the best for ourselves. And why don't you goes, describe your your diet, your whole yes. taste? Yeah. Sure. sure so uh, doctor in the last uh, year or two i've been um, i mean without realizing it i've been doing something i mean doing intermittent fasting um, so i mean i didn't know there was a fancy term for what i was already doing um, but i would wake up and not be hungry immediately so i would end up eating a sort of like a late breakfast or a brunch okay. so what i do these days is i have my first meal by uh, noon and it's usually eggs then nothing um, no no uh, milk 
the coffee nothing straight uh, i'm a fan of i'm a fan of coffee uh, tea as well so okay. i yeah i do have coffee uh, but That's i have it black and in the morning yeah in the oh. morning yeah and without milk without sugar yeah um so that and eggs and then i have a early dinner um and my dinner is a combination of uh, you know uh, so protein brunch is only eggs nothing else yes okay yeah so either i mean uh, either i will have uh, oh, eggs and no fruit nothing else oh uh, no i don't have much of fruit but uh, sometimes i have vegetable as an omelet so uh, in the omelet i'll put some bell peppers or onions or um, like i keep the variety going so sometimes it's cheese sometimes it's sausages Uh, yeah. keeps changing um and then i have a second meal uh, of the day at uh, usually an early dinner um so i have um, mostly you know a comp- uh, so i usually eat by, yeah yeah between 6 to 8 i mean i know that's a pretty wide window but considering uh, all other things i i'm trying to finish by um, 8 8:30 late this and um, i have uh, you know i have veggies i have uh, chicken or fish and uh, so that's that's my average day and virtually no uh, rice no chapati no bread no puri nothing of that type no nothing ghee, no dosa no rice of any type zero yes. zero 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 and no. at first it was difficult i mean uh, for to convince myself also was difficult and uh, i am the kind of person i'm a bit of a skeptic so uh, you know i mean i don't believe everything that is said um, to the face i mean i want to prove it and i want to check it for myself so even when i read dr bernstein's book i said okay you know he lives in new york and um, i mean how do i know that what he is doing will apply for me or not i'm in i'm living in india I'm, we have different uh, food pattern we have different everything so um, i tried it out and it, and it, you know it i saw drastic result uh, drastic difference i mean of course along with the uh, change in food i also had to reduce my dose so i uh, take an average my total daily dose is um, roughly 15 to 18 units total the whole thing yeah okay. total including bolus and basil and i know that's probably much lower than average yeah, uh, but that's yeah all yeah okay 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 and um, i use the um, since the last four uh, years four and a half years i've been using the metronic pump um, along with the libre pro and i use a device called the meow meow uh, which is basically a, a bluetooth device that converts the libre pro uh, into a real time cgm so i can see my sugars on my phone directly without having to manually you know sc- kind of scan it each time okay okay um so uh, while i would definitely same you want you can just uh, know what is yes yeah. okay and uh, the best part is that um thanks to technology um you know even though i might not be living with my parents uh, they they get notified of my blood sugars immediately so okay. even for them it's a big relief that uh, they know i'm fine okay every day they get their readings uh, on their yes phone. yes Yes. So uh, the way we've done it, doctor, is that um, with the Meow Meow, um, I don't need to manually scan like a flash glucose monitor. So I connect uh, two apps. Uh, the the Meow Meow has an app of itself. It's called the Tomato app. Um, so I connect that with the Blue Circle Diabetes app. Uh, it's an app that we created in house, um, and all our beta testers have been uh, people with type one diabetes. Yes. so we all tested it thoroughly and um, uh, by connecting these two apps uh, we can add a follower uh, multiple followers actually so i've added my family my parents my sister and uh, each time i get a hypo or a hyper i also get a whatsapp message from my parents you know that i can see your blood sugar are you okay yeah okay. wonderful so, okay. yeah and i mean i wish this would have been there when i was in school uh, but i know that there are a lot of kids <laughs> Uh, in think? the current no, scenario is <laughs> not even a mobile phone let alone whatsapp and bluetooth and all that is all new only there was really? no there was libre those days only 5 years ago libre came correct so pumps were there, but then there were all the old model pumps and so on so they yeah. not bluetooth enabled and and so on so yeah so oh that's amazing that story was very amazing so you have tied the whole thing uh, uh, together the only uh, you know the only uh, doubt i had about your carb intake is we normally say that about you know 80 grams 100 grams of carbs is necessary to prevent ketosis 
otherwise ketosis the fat will break down and then you will be having right. ketosis all the time so somebody with right. t1 t going to that extent and having ketosis that proneness to diabetic ketoacidosis we at least that's what we feel or we have been taught that it can right. happen <clears throat> but that doesn't happen for you at all no ketones at so, all so doctor my uh, the number of times my blood sugar goes over 200 I mean, I can't remember the last time. At least in the last uh, more than a month, um, my sugar hasn't crossed two hundred, and I know that for a fact because my uh, Libre and Meow Meow is continuously giving me the readings. Yeah. So, um, and also, uh, doctor, I mean, like I know the doctors know this, but um, sometimes what happens is, as a patient, um, we might get confused between nutritional ketosis and diabetic ketoacidosis. Yes. So. both can actually uh, join with each other if you are not having diabetes a little nutritional ketosis is okay but when you are having the nc to ketosis already through diabetes when you have yes. this all added on it can get because i know one of my type 1 diabetes uh, you know uh, doctors who used to work with me she had type yes. 1 diabetes and she tried this keto diet and developed ketosis and right, she had right. been in hospital with the uh, doctor i mean there's two so many unknown things like uh, uh, recently i also learned that uh, euglycemic dk is also a, a thing like you know yeah. so even by having the sglt2 group of drugs if you take you right. get it. and that's why in type 1 diabetic we are very scared to use it because it can get into ketosis so right. Yeah. So initially, doctor, I was um, I was in nutritional ketosis. I uh, would check once in a while, um, um, you know, on the on the strips as well as on the blood. Lose a lot of weight. Yes, yes. So I was. Um, I mean, I've always been. I've always been fit. I've been running long distances uh, since maybe around 15 years easily. Um, okay. But I was always also very chubby. You know, despite the exercise, I was kind of. Um, I wouldn't say obese, but definitely overweight. Yeah. Um, and in a in a period of a year, doctor. Um, so I checked. Um, I mean, I was fortunate enough to be able to check my body fat percentage through a DEXA scan um, before starting. And I mean, I didn't do it purposely. I just happened to check. But then once I did low carb after a year, um, initially my body fat percentage was thirty seven percent. That eventually, as of today, is somewhere around twenty two twenty four percent. So over a period of four years, um, I've you know reduced my um, body fat percentage. My lean mass has gone up. So I know that it's not that I'm just you know losing weight, but I'm also getting stronger. Um, so I sort of as a, like from a lay person's perspective, I know that more or less I'm I'm doing okay. Yeah, like I'm. I love to admit, not only from a lay person's point of view, from a pure scientist who does uh, you know DEXAs and. thing on a scientific basis and publishes it's absolutely right but our own fear is that because i don't have type on myself so the our own fear is that that risk of dk is it there at the back we've seen that happen so two three okay, people okay. that happen they tried a very low carb diet keto diet and they went into diabetic ketosis they get admitted with ketosis and okay. uh, so that fear is but then for you it, it's not uh, there Have have you ever measured your insulin to see how much insulin is there in your body? C-peptide not been done, no. Oh, uh, doctor, I maybe you have done some time, yeah. Yes, actually, doctor, when I was diagnosed, uh, um, I don't know if it was there or we didn't do it. Uh, so that point we did not. Those days may not yeah. have been done. Yeah. Uh, but I did it in 2016 or 17, and it was, uh, if I remember correctly, it was 0.1, um, which Very I is, yeah. Very low. That's in type. Any anyway, 25 years, we don't expect much of uh, yeah. C-peptide. Uh, yeah, I may be I may be wrong on the exact number, but I'll find out and tell you. I have the report. Point one sounds uh, normal. At some point, you can send me those results also. I'll okay. create a file for you and keep your records here in Chennai. And then sometime when you okay. come, we we'll see you. Okay. Now let's okay. get on to your uh, sports and marathon. I'm waiting to hear about that. Uh, so you said uh, some last 10-15 years you've been running, and you told me. Yes. and back to the father also used to run and so you're inspired by that and you started running and then you went on and there's no stopping you after that marathon and ultra marathon 100 km oxfam trail walker mixed martial arts mma uh, you know uh, you name it and then you really gone uh, full hog on that so, so tell us about that and i'll show some of the pictures that uh, you sent me as well yes so So um, my my father has been a long distance runner um, since 
he was young and uh, you know he would just go out of the house walk or run 30 kilometers and come back and my grandmother would be absolutely shocked what is this crazy behavior yeah. um, so i think uh, i have my dad to blame for that those genes <laughs> come from there or, or to and, thank for that yeah okay yes or to thank and uh, so doctor in mumbai uh, the mumbai marathon is a huge event that happens every year sometime in jan and when it started um, around 12 13 years ago um i was i was a child and uh, my father enrolled for the full marathon which is 42 kilometers so it was like a family picnic for us because all of us took part my mother my sister and me we did the dream run that was the shortest 6 uh, 7 kilometers uh, dad went for the full marathon and since then it's been on my mind that if my dad can do it obviously i can do it why not so eventually i worked towards that goal and um, you know started running and um, did a half marathon first which is 21 kilometers then i thought i'll push my luck and you know try to do a 42 uh, my my parents were obviously worried because uh, you know type 1 diabetes uh, fear of hypo plus um, just the general exhaustion of pushing your body so hard um, and a lot of people told me why do you want to do it this i mean just enjoy it but this was my way of enjoying you know so and i wanted to maybe somehow somewhere in my mind i wanted to prove a point that why not like if you take care of your blood sugars and your body you can push it to any extent absolutely absolutely yeah yeah so i'll ask sundar if you're there you can show the uh, pictures yeah so there you are so some of the pictures so explain what's happening yes. in these three pictures so, the first picture on the top where i'm um, you know reading a book and and simply actually showing off <laughs> uh, so that is uh, uh, one of the photo shoots uh, that we had with um, abbot um, they, they created an ad a couple of years ago and um, i was the part of that you are wearing okay yes okay. i'm wearing the libre um, okay. so couple of other t1 friends were part of this as well um, yeah. so this is from there and the one below with the indian flag i was very very proud and very happy to represent india at as a metronic global hero so metronic used to run a program called uh, they stop now uh, but it used to be called the global hero program and uh, around 20 to 25 people from around the world would be selected um, okay. i was one from india and uh, there were two race uh, categories so there was uh, 10 miles and there was uh, 26 miles uh, which is a full marathon i took part in the full marathon and um, Made a lot of friends from all over the world. Uh, the picture was, on the right. Where was it held? It was in Minneapolis. Minneapolis. In the United States, yeah. yeah. So uh, that was a lot of fun, uh, and it was also my uh, first experience of running in a in a pretty cold climate. I mean, coming from India, and, you know, it's one of the coldest places in the U.S. Uh, Minnesota, yes, yes. one of the coldest place. It's a twin cities, no? St. Louis and uh, Correct. Minneapolis. Yeah. Correct. So we and actually ran the twin. Paul and uh, Minneapolis, yeah, Saint Paul. Correct. And yeah. the marathon itself was called the Twin Cities Marathon. It was a beautiful route. I mean, absolutely stunning, uh, you know, um, topography. And um, I, I actually, I went out running in my shorts because um, I'm used to running in in uh, much warmer climates. You know, even in India, I haven't lived uh, in the colder parts. I'm, I mean. um lived where it's always been warm so I, i got a couple of strange looks from people that you know it's so cold and but i brushed it off because um that's how i was comfortable but it was yeah. a lot of fun and uh, it was mostly of uh, because minnesota after october november can get very cold this was yes, in yes. summer is it no. this was in the month of october so it was starting oh. to get cold doctor yeah 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 i think when we started the run it was uh, somewhere around 1 or 2 degrees Which for me was extremely cold. And we can go to minus forty and minus thirty-five and all that. Yeah. Correct. Yeah. So <laughs> that was a lot of fun. Uh, on the right hand side, the uh, the picture that you see in the black is uh, when we were practicing for the Oxfam Trail Walker, which is a hundred kilometer trail walk. Uh, it happens through um, you know uh, villages and and um, you know jungle areas of Karjat in Maharashtra. Okay. And um, uh, so basically. Uh, I've I've had my eye on this uh, trail walker since a couple of years, but uh, the challenge was that one needed to participate as part of a team or team of four people. 
and um, usually there are a lot of corporate uh, participants you know people come through their offices um, together and um, you know i always ask my colleagues uh, should we participate and let's go ahead and take part and uh, you know people would would laugh at me and they would say are you crazy 100 kilometers we won't even go by car why would we go by foot <laughs> <laughs> so i uh, never got uh, you know those other three people and i always i felt like you know i have to give up on this dream now i want to push it to a century one day but uh, let it be then uh, of all the things that could happen the photo on the top that you see all the four people are type 1 diabetics they're all my friends and um, i mean you know god made a way for us to do it and they all luckily agreed that you know it fine we'll walk with you none of us had ever walked uh, that kind of a distance before um, and uh, it, i mean they were all uh, uh, some would do gym some would do crossfit but nobody had pushed uh, you know uh, that kind of distance so i'm very grateful to um, all of my friends you know sonu chinmay raj um, they literally kept their common sense aside they kept their social life aside they kept everything on the side and you know everybody practiced together and uh, we we eventually made it we completed the 100 kilometers so the photos that you see on the right and uh, on at the bottom are uh, photos from the one below is just before we started so we started on um, and um, i mean i don't know this is we started on friday the 13th which uh, comes with its own uh, you know uh, background and uh, at 5 in the morning this was us smiling um, just before starting and um, on the right hand side you see my friend sonu and me we are showing off our devices so she has the libre pro on i am okay. showing off my pump and my uh, libre pro and the meow meow okay so it was a wonderful experience these photographs are from our practice sessions um, we did a lot of practice as well um, so weekends we would practice together weekdays we would practice individually because everyone was busy with their own schedule so we would do strength training or yoga or something uh, weekends we would i mean every sunday uh, come what may whether it would rain or shine or be hot we would walk you know we started with like 15 20 kilometers we built it up to 30 40 we even pushed uh, one day up to 50 kilometers uh, during the practice so a um, lot of um literally lot of sweat and it is over two days is it or yes doctor so 50 48 hours okay. yes yes and so how long it takes you for 50 kilometers 50 to walk? Uh, so actually 50 took us for the whole day like we uh, retired for the night um at 50 Mm. and we were kind of stressed because um, um people were even you know retiring for the night after 60 km so we felt that uh, maybe we should push ourselves and all but you you can decide 40 or 50 or 60 yes. yeah okay so you yes. took it so, off yeah. correct correct so every 10 km there was a checkpoint and uh, we had a uh, we had a whole crew team so we had uh, uh, in fact one of our t1 friends rohan uh, he was part of our crew as well um then um, there was another t1 boy madhur his father and his friend came in um, my parents my sister so we had a nice hearty uh, crew and it was very essential because um, we were walking 100 kilometers and they need to be there as a backup for us you know in case we need anything uh, we had a backpack so we had our we, we were completely prepared doctor we had glucagon with us we had uh, uh, everything from glucometer to libre pro to insulin frio pouch i mean we we started making checklists 6 months prior to the event and uh, there was no way that we could have uh, sort of you know yeah had a mistake or made an error <laughs> and that's the write up you had is it in the e- mumbai age yes. about the event yes picture. doctor is there one so, more sunday uh, ah this is uh, regarding your write up again yeah Yes. So uh, we uh, also got a bit of media coverage because what we were doing, nobody had done before. We were the first team in in the country to have uh, been a type one diabetic team to walk hundred kilometers. In fact, um, even the organizers of the event were pretty worried. Actually, um, I mean, they were very supportive, extremely supportive, but they were also scared because they realized that uh, you know th- th- this could escalate if it becomes a medical emergency. Uh, but we had done a lot of practice together we knew how our individual bodies react we also knew like 
I knew that if one of my friends goes low, okay, he's going to act in this way. So we were prepared, you know. Like if I go low, the three of them will help me. If they go low, we help them. Okay. Uh, so, so those are the pictures. Uh, so we will, uh, you know, a lot of questions are meanwhile coming in. Some of them are related yes. to Pitru. Uh, so what, one of them is asking, uh, let me go up a little bit. There are a lot of questions. Uh, so Mega Pratipa Ritam uh, is asking, I am looking for a Bluetooth device, but heard Mio Mio is very heavy in weight and hence Libre patch gets out as well. Is it so? She's asking. Oh, uh, not really. I can show you the device. I have it on my arm right now. So, uh, not sure how it's much is visible. Yeah. yeah so the, the round one is the Libre and that's all there is. That much there yes, is. that's all there is. Yeah. The mega that it's not uh, all that uh, heavy. And you can see it is probably a few grams in weight. So, it's not all that heavy. Yes. That answers that question. Uh, Vikas Sood is asking, is it possible to uh, send a uh, child with type 1 diabetes uh, to hostel for studies. I want to ask both Dr. Mohan and Nupur. You answer first, then I'll tell you. <laughs> uh, so I did not uh, go out to study, uh, but that was not because of any particular reason. It, not, it was not because of diabetes. I just happened to get admission in, in the same city. Um, yeah. But definitely, you can send your child. I think it's a, it's a great learning experience for the child to be independent and an opportunity to self-manage. If they are able to manage being at home under your supervision and you trust them enough, uh, I think it would be a great experience. That would be my answer. Also, I think it depends on the age of the child. I think the child is, uh, say, below 10 years, I would hesitate because I don't know the child can manage for itself. Uh, but I suppose there are children who are very smart even at young age. But beyond that, I don't think there should be any problem. Let me tell you the story of, I think I mentioned one of my Facebook Live programs earlier. Uh, we had a girl with uh, where this debate came up. She was getting admission into Bits Pilani. And uh, so her, her father was saying, don't go, don't go. But her mother was saying, no, 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 let her go, let her go. Then only she will learn how to go. And she was very adamant that she's going. So finally she went. First two years went very smooth. Nothing happened. Then in the third year or so, what happened was she started dancing and tremendous amount of, uh, you know, dancing and thing. And she didn't reduce her insulin dose. So a couple of times she went to a diabetic coma. And that was the first case of type 1 in Bitspilani. So they panicked and they told them, take the child out. We cannot have coma here and this and that. They got scared. They thought something going to happen to the child. Then they said, contact our doctor. So he rang me from there and said, what is this disease? You know, suddenly they go into coma. And I said, nothing. She reduced her insulin dose. She didn't. She, you know, she started exercising. She didn't, so she'll be fine. And I can do long distance from here. Don't worry. Then they, you know, they got over it. And then the second, uh, uh, you know, t one d joined uh, Bitspilani. And then, of course, many more came. So initially, it can be a bit of a shock. And so if they know how to manage, then the, that is fine. It's just that she started exercising and didn't reduce her insulin dose. She didn't think of it. You know, I'm doing so much more, so I should be cutting down. And those are the pre-libre days and pre this thing. The answer is if the child is well trained, uh, then they can go. I mean, if somebody can do a 100 kilometer walk or run a marathon, going to a hostel is not the, the big deal. There are a couple of other questions. Let me finish that since I'm on this. Uh, my C peptide is 1.3. Is it OK? Um, Sashi Gopika. Uh, we'll have to, uh, I mean, I cannot give an answer to it, but she also mentioned point when you're saying 1.3 for you. See, told that somebody else has also asked about C peptide. C peptide depends on the blood sugar level. Uh, so in type 1s, it is nearly zero. Uh, but in type 2s, 1.3 is not very low, but it can be 2, it can be 2.5, 3, 3.5, depending on the stage. So if you can send me your reports and your blood sugars, your duration of diabetes, your age, all that uh, matters. So we will look into that. Uh, so Dr. Chandra Kanta is asking, uh, she's a diabetologist who works for us in a Hyderabad branch. She's asking, how do you manage hypos and dehydration while running? She, the reason she's asking is Chandra Kanta herself is a runner. She herself oh, is wow. doing some half marathons and so on. She's not type 1 though, uh, so, yes. but she's, she's just running. Uh, so she's asking, how do you manage hypos and dehydration while running? Uh, first of all, it's, I mean, it's always so amazing to uh, meet another runner. There's some kind of camaraderie that's uh, there. Uh, so that's very exciting. Uh, hypos, I uh, make sure to, you know, titrate my doses accordingly. So I know that if I, um, uh, if I sprint, I'll need more insulin, not less. 
so sometimes um depending on the type of um you know, even depending on the type of running if i'm i'm making a dash for the finish line um my blood sugars might spike but generally because of uh, walking or jogging especially long distances more or less an aerobic activity um i need to sort of reduce my basal a little bit um but i i usually take a call based on the situation i i, I would never go out of my house without a uh, glucose without an id card without um, um you know glucometer also just to be doubly safe so um i would keep checking even if even if that it's all a matter of balancing and knowing your own uh, diabetic status and adjusting the dose accordingly that's the short answer i think are you there nupur you have lost you temporarily nupur you are you are stuck okay i'll meanwhile take some of the questions nupur if you want you can go out and come back if uh, you are not able to uh, are you back sorry are you back you momentarily you got sorry we lost you momentarily so vidya murthy she was in the other uh, program mm -hmm. which i stopped just before this and she asked the yeah. question and i'll answer it then sorry vidya uh, so about yeah. the gluten wheat the thing does it contain gluten is it harmful for diabetes see wheat is not bad i mean not that wheat is bad or rice is bad or anything less all this uh, fake news that you keep reading about but if you are gluten sensitive and if you have uh, a condition where uh, you cannot uh, you know celiac disease if you have where you you cannot take any gluten then if you take wheat you will have diarrhea and you will not be able to tolerate and you just have to avoid wheat but you cannot say that every patient with uh, diabetes cannot eat wheat because in north india what do they eat they eat only wheat and every person with diabetes is eating wheat so it all depends wheat like rice contains carbohydrate so recently we published showing that excess rice consumption is related to type 2 diabetes and uh, that was a study which we did the pure study so if you take too much of carbohydrate it's not good so cutting down on carbohydrate is good i know there are more questions about carbohydrate based on what uh, nupur just said i'll come to that so mega pratibaram ritham is asking can you elaborate in flu shot and pneumococcal vaccination for type 1s considering covid time not only for type 1 mega but for everyone all people with type uh, 1 type 2 diabetes even people with the, people without diabetes also older age group any frail person any other illness you have or even anyone you know for that matter can take a flu shot and pneumococcal vaccination if you take pneumococcal vaccination you are protected throughout life uh, from uh, pneumonia if you are then reach 65 years you may need one more shot but otherwise you are protected throughout life uh, the flu shot is to be taken annually and if you take it remember flu is also a coronavirus what we are calling as covid is a novel coronavirus sars mers everything is coronavirus about seven types of coronavirus so maybe you may get some protection if you take flu shot but at least you'll get won't get influenza at least so at least you if you get cold cough fever you know it's not influenza so it's worth taking it so once the one in one arm one in the other arm you can take it on the same day there's no side effects you can take that usma hamid isn't such a low calorie low carb diet unhealthy it's not balanced will not result in long term complication especially proven that 50% calorie from carb increases less than 50 increases mortality also it can cause micronutrient deficiency glucose value shouldn't be the only thing to monitor uh, usma partly you are right but as i said it's so much individualized for example she is managing she is doing well she is type 1 she is not having hypos she is not having ketosis she is not having anything so her body has adjusted to that but i agree with you to have a balanced meal a little bit of carbs a lot of protein and healthy fats if you have all the three components it makes it a balanced diet you are absolutely right otherwise some micronutrient deficiencies can come i am not one for keto diet 100% because of course for an obese person it can help you to lose weight but i believe that the excess carbs that we are taking is also bad we are taking 75% carbohydrate that's the bane in our country if you go to zero carbs that's also probably not good somewhere in between 20% 30% 40% carbohydrate depending on your body needs and your weight and your sugar and other thing is, is quite good and there's no one answer for everyone there's no one size fits all so taking a little bit of carbs is good because it gives you energy but then the protein is also very good and the healthy fats are also very good all of them you should take shushil kumar basin i'm 70 years old started running at 62 in the last 3 years started running ultra have run 100 200 300 500 and 1000 miler i am diabetic and can't take protein as it increase my serum creatinine how to balance protein intake or uh, is it not important to have at this age uh, shushil at 70 uh, if you have creatinine which is going up 
your protein intake, you have to watch a little bit, especially animal protein can increase your creatinine. Uh, so some protein is good for you, but uh, taking too much of it is not good. In fact, if your creatinine is already going up and you're 70 years old, I would go a little slow on this doing ultra events because your body is already age is there. Number two, your creatinine is already beginning to go up, which means that your kidney function is not good. At that stage, when you run, definitely dehydration occurs. So I would be a little careful. Whoever is your doctor, please check with them and then take it. A young person doing it is not the same as an old person. However, there's no hard and fast rule. If you're happy with it, you do that, but under doctor's advice. Um, so Mega Pratham, we finished. Meow, meow. Then is it possible to tell that's over? Uh, Suganta Ayer, I have a personal question. I'm a diabetic, 28 years. While all other parameters are normal, my A1C is always around 8 or more. In Hyderabad, they took an AGP and to estimate 5.9. What is the reason? Something to change in structure. Well, Suganta Ayer, the HB, the Libre Pro, what it tells you about your, the AGP telling you about your A1C is an estimated A1C for two weeks. It is projecting what it can be in the next two months. The HB is telling you the past. The a ones the Libre is telling you the future. So they are not uh, co co consistent with each other. Also, A1C is A1C and Libre is Libre. You should not confuse the two. This is meant to see whether your time and range is normal or not. HB1C is telling you whether the last three months control is good or not. So don't use the AGP to find out your HB1C. Do the HB1C separately. And 8% I think is not good. You must try to already have got the 28 years duration. Try to get it to below 7% uh, if possible. Uh, so, Selvaraj Pichar Pillai, sometime I feel hypoglycemic. How can I manage the that? Well, Selvaraj, you have to find out why you're getting hypoglycemia. Is it due to tablet? Is it because your lunch is delayed? Is it because your medicine is too much? Is it because the medicine can be changed? I don't know anything about your condition, so I cannot tell you. But it can be fixed. It is not something that cannot be fixed. Um, if a type 1 person who is on insulin pump can do that it can very easily be done i don't think it's uh, you know a, a big uh, no brainer so we can easily find out your diet exercise medicines and then we can fix it that is where the agp helps we should get an agp done if you're not already a patient contact us i'll be able to help you ramya kirti doctor i'm a diabetic for past one and a half years my feet and hands are burning i feel hot how do you know what's wrong with me also hypothyroidism uh, well ramya I, possibly your sugar is not under control what you're saying is signs of neuropathy Peripheral neuropathy normally comes if the A1C is not under control. So we'll have to find out what your uh, A1C is, get it under control. There are medicines for burning feet and we can easily get it under control. You probably need to do fasting, PP, HB1C, check out your, uh, you know, the medicines, uh, whether any of your medicines are producing this and then treat that. Selvaraj, uh, Pichipalate, uh, diabetic meal, diabetic tablet before meal, how many minutes before meal? Normally about half an hour. 30 minutes but again it's individualized some patients can take it half an hour some patients can take it uh, just before some patients need to take it one hour earlier for it to work it is totally individualized uh, sanjeev mondal does fasting and postman value correlate with c-peptide because some patients are fasting uh, pp is very high but c-peptide is fairly good uh, if the c-peptide is good in spite of having high sugars it means you've got very good insulin reserve if you control your sugar your c-peptide will probably go up that's a good news that you're telling me C peptide being good, but then the C peptide reliability of the lab is also very important. Last two questions. Uh, Shashi Gopika is Selvida Kesar LIG good for diabetic patient? Well, we did the trial. This is Dr. Reddy's product. It's a good protein supplement. It also tastes very good. We did the trial for it. We published it uh, in a nutrition journal. Uh, it doesn't increase the sugar level. The glycemic index is very low. Protein is very good. It tastes good. So if you want to take it, you can take it. Uh, then same uh, Gopika, Sashi Gopika, my weight is 100 kg. How can I reduce my weight? Please advise dieting, exercise. I'm taking psychology drug. Well, those psychology drugs can increase the weight because they are well known to increase weight. It's one of the side effects. It's probably because that you're putting on weight. Talk to your doctor, see whether they can reduce that. You must start an exercise program. Reducing your carbohydrate will definitely help. Exercising will help and burning off the calories will help and uh, focusing on a very positive uh, kind of a life will help. Yoga will help. Uh, pranayama will help. So if you want to consult us, please do that. And we'll be happy to help you. There are a couple of other questions which have come. Um, how do you manage? How have you used FIASP in your insulin pump? So Dr. Kumar, uh, who is a diabetologist uh, from Chennai, he wants to know whether you use FIASP in your insulin. Which insulin do you oh, use? Yes, doctor. 
uh, yes, what I've used, uh, I've used it in the pump. Um, I am now using no rapid, which I was only using um, when I started on pump therapy. Uh, so okay. my experience with Fiasc was that um, I used it for um, around six months, and then I began to develop a uh, resistance to that particular insulin. When I uh, did my own research online, I realized that people were facing this issue, uh, and you know it would not be as effective as initially. Uh, it, it, when I started out. Uh, it would bring image drop in the sugars, but later it didn't work out for me. I informed the company as well, um, but I had to switch back to over rapid. Over no rapid. I, I so also my personal experience. It works for some people. Absorption after you inject. So in a pump when it's flowing, I don't know how a faster one is going to work. And many people have told me this that they feel better with no rapid. Dr. Jalaja Ramesh, uh, can you do a program with type one diabetes who's pregnant or a type one who's delivered recently so that they can share their experience? Jalaja, I'll be happy to do that. If you have such a person who can communicate well, let me know. I'll be happy to do that. You can come on the show too, and I can have both of you, uh, you know, take uh, questions if you like. Serum fructosamine, would you recommend it versus HbA1c? Jaimala Singh. Well, fructosamine is not as much a standardized test as uh, A1c. A1c is much more robust. We do fructosamine. We don't normally do it in pregnancy. What uh, Jalaja asked just now. So during pregnancy, we, we we do it because short term control, two weeks control. But the assay itself is not all that great. Most labs don't do it, but we do it in certain situations. What about GAD antibody? GAD antibody is done to find out whether you have type one diabetes or you have GAD or LADA type diabetes, and therefore we do that. Once we do it, we don't need to keep on doing it. Uh, we don't need to do it in everyone, but if you suspect type 1 diabetes, C-peptide and GAD are very good. Uh, Ajay Sharma, but insulin absorption when I take injection of the abdomen is very poor. Other sites, it's okay. I'm very surprised to hear that, Ajay Sharma, because uh, we have lost Nupur. She's probably coming back. Um, she got stuck, I think, again, uh, some internet problem. She'll come back. Uh, so, Ajay Sharma, I'm surprised to hear that because it's best absorption of insulin is from the abdomen, always. That is why even find, you'll find the pump also put in the abdomen. Uh, so try it out. There's something wrong. Maybe you're not injecting in the right place. Um, then Mega Pratipa Ritam. Uh, welcome back. I think there's some bandwidth problem. Every now and yes, then. Yes, yes. Okay, last yeah, couple of questions. My apologies. My Wi Fi is. Yeah. No problem. No problem. I keep going with the question. So I have heard insulin consumption should also be in sync with your body weight. Well, it's partly true. I mean, if the more overweight you are, your body surface area is more. And therefore, you need insulin. Just now, Nopur was saying that she takes only 15, 18 units of insulin. It's quite low for a type 1. And the reason is because she's taking so low carbs, she doesn't need insulin for the carbs. The amount of protein, she's only eating, you know, an egg and then some uh, non-veg and something. And so the protein is so, you need much, much less protein for that. So insulin consumption definitely depends on the diet, on your exercise, and also on your uh, body weight, of course. What is the difference between old insulin and nowadays new generation insulin? Well, I have been in this field for 50 years. We have started from uh, bovine insulin from the cow, okay, or bull. Then we had the porcine insulin. Then we had human insulin. Then we had the analog insulin. And now we have fast acting, you know, FIASP and so on. Every generation, it gets better. Absorption is faster, works faster, sinks better. Uh, so the insulins are getting better and better. Doesn't mean that the old ones are bad. I still use the old human insulin and so on. And so they're quite good. It all depends on individual uh, things. See, she finds the older one over rapid being better than the FIASP. So each one's body is different. Can diabetic foot be treated with physiotherapy? Depends on what diabetic foot you have. If you have a, if you have a foot problem, foot drop, where your, you know, one a thing is paralyzed, uh, you know, then with physiotherapy you can. But with neuropathy, sensory neuropathy, you will probably need more than just uh, physiotherapy and good control of sugar, of course. Type 1 diagnosed before six years. Is there some meaning to do C-peptide test? Now, well, you can always do C-peptide to see whether how much insulin is secreting. There are some type 1s whose C-peptide is persistent. Even after 20 years, 30 years, they're still having some C-peptide. There are some type 1s who within the first one month, all the C-peptide is gone. So it's always useful to know which category you're in. Ruchika Kathuria, how safe are sweeteners like stevia or monk fruit? Um, well, stevia is a plant-based one, so there's no problem. All sweeteners are probably safe if you take it in the, in the... There are two videos of mine on sweeteners, which you can watch on YouTube, where I explain this. There is no risk of cancer, and there's some 30 years ago with uh, in, in mice, uh, some few mice produced, uh, it had bladder cancer. Never one human uh, cancer has been reported, but that fear has gotten to people. Cancer, cancer, cancer. It doesn't happen, you know, so... And the amount of sweetener you take is so small. But for children, 
below 12 years pregnant women and so on you should not take uh, artificial sweeteners otherwise you can take venu gopal my wife's weight is 104 kilos how can be reduced which exercise is good every exercise is good if you burn off the calories both diet and exercise are necessary to lose weight just exercise is not enough just diet is not enough both are needed and it has to be regular it has to be consistent carbs have to come down there is no doubt if you have to lose weight but it's achievable and don't think that from 104 if you go to 50 only it is good 104 to 100 is good to start then 95 is good then 90 is good so step put your put small uh, goals 5 kg 10 kg rather than thinking of 55 kg you know uh, but then if all else fail there are things like bariatric surgery also is this keto diet uh, really good for longer period my view on that is that it's not sustainable you know some people uh, can continue it but 90 to 95% of people after 3 months they they're just not able to continue it and so they go back and then they put on their weight and then again they'll try some other diet and then they'll try intermittent fast then they'll try yeah, paleo diet then they'll try some other diet and some, they're always trying some diet or the other they never taking a normal diet you know from one to the other to the other to the other to the other and all the time the sugar will be high low high low it'll be going like this so if you're sticking to something you stick to that and um, i don't know if you take zero carbs for very long whether you may develop some micronutrient deficiency because carbs give you something protein gives you something fat gives you something in school we are taught that uh, so i think a little bit of everything is the best in in my uh, opinion if time doctor, permits if I may, yeah sorry. please uh, if yeah. i may just uh, say one thing for uh, dr juriwal was asking uh, so i just want to clarify that i'm not doing the keto diet um i'm doing uh, i'm following dr bernstein's protocol which is low carb um, and high protein so um, that's what i'm doing i'm not i'm not doing high fat not really a keto diet okay yeah uh, so so it's only low carb so low carb i, I say is good because low carb i have yeah. been saying reduce carbs reduce carbs reduce carbs yes. but zero carb zero of anything is bad if you go to zero protein that's also bad suppose zero fat oh i don't want to get uh, you know cholesterol heart attack so i'll have zero fat you'll end up with 80% carbs which is very very bad okay that's why balanced diet is good time permits what are views on loop this question is for both of you that is probably she's talking about this meow meow and looping yes, and yes, yes. you you answer that that's better sure so um, mega um, i mean um, it's a technology and it's available and why not i mean um, it's good to try however i just want to mention that um, i've been i mean for the lack of technology earlier we've been low school i mean uh, we've been old school i've used syringes for 20 years um it i think it boils down to the management you know i mean i have my a1c's in the fives without loop i'm doing it manually and i also know people who do loop and they have a higher a1c so it it all comes down to what works for you i'm i'm happy to experiment with loop myself uh, when i get the chance i'll definitely do it but i know what works in my case is my constant monitoring and adjustment of doses and food correct i think i agree with you because jazz uses the loop and she has also got 5 point something so it all depends on how you manage it is not the see you can have a very fancy phone and then you may not even know how to accept making a phone call you may not know anything you can have a 100 channel television but you don't know how to use uh, one of them also another another person will just have a you know two channel thing and they are very happy with it so it all depends on how how you use it and how technology savvy you are and things like that so avneet kaur my type 1 diabetes son has other autoimmune disease on steroids um, any suggestions unfortunately see that's a problem you have, you know the hypothyroidism comes along with or hyperthyroidism can come celiac disease can come other autoimmune diseases can come with type 1 diabetes psoriasis can come there are a host of other condition they are all autoimmune diseases so if you have one of them so be it doesn't matter you can still look after that also if you have to be on steroid so be it but that also will adjust the dosages it depend 5 mg is not a huge dose uh, we can easily adjust that and your doctor will tell you what to do just because you have type 1 diabetes doesn't mean you should not treat the other condition if that condition needs it there are asthmatics who need it there are many other uh, problems rheumatoid arthritis there are a lot of things uh, pradeep saxena child my son is 13 years old type 1 last 3 years a1c remains 7 to 7.5 how can you bring it below 7 is yoga helpful yoga is helpful pranayama is helpful dieting is helpful reducing carbs is helpful exercise is helpful monitoring sugars is very important doing the libre or the one of the cgm is extremely important adjusting the doses is very important she said how she struggled for one year at 6 and then she brought it down to 5.5 it's not easy to do it 
uh, 7 to 7.5 is not terrible, but you can definitely work on it and, and bring it down. Kameshwari Venkata Veli Reason for high microalbuminuria. Al microalbuminuria is not good, uh, Kameshwari. It means that the kidney is beginning to leak urine and uh, protein, and that is not good. You must try to bring it down as soon as possible. Uh, Rivia Das, my mother is type 1 diabetic. It goes as low as 40 and as high as 300 on a daily basis. What do we, we follow a diet and regular? What should we advise? This can easily be, this is called brittle diabetes from 40 to uh, 300 in two hours time. For that, again, adjustment of the dose, probably you need a pump. A pump will definitely help uh, to, to reduce these fluctuations in the sugar. Time and range will improve. Hypos will, will go away. Seriously consider a pump. At the very least, at least a CGM or a uh, Libre uh, to see whether how much fluctuation is there, adjusting your carbs, adjusting your diet, adjusting your insulin doses, maybe adjusting the number of insulin shots and your diet, all that can definitely help to uh, improve. Uh, so I think uh, so far, whatever questions have come, uh, okay, there's uh, are more, are they more prone to autoimmune disorders? Ruchika, yes, I just said that. Arun Kumar, do you have published books about diabetes common people to read? We do have some books. Uh, there is a handbook of diabetes, but today in the net, you can get everything else uh, that you need, uh, you know, on diabetes. What is that you, you don't need? I mean, what is that you can't get? Every information you want about diabetes, you can get. Rajesh Venkateshan, how can I reduce carbs? South Indian diet is only carbs, idli dosa. Who said you should take idli dosa every day? You know, you can reduce the number of idli dosa. If you're taking four idlis, make it two, you know. If you're taking two dosa, make it one. Take more vegetables. See that there is protein always in your diet. From morning, afternoon, night, see that you have protein. You take that you have, you know, sundal, you know, Bengal gram, green gram, black gram, rajma. All these things are full of protein. If you're a non-vegetarian, it's easy. You have chicken, fish, all that you can take. White of the egg is excellent. If you take two egg white omelette or three egg whites in one omelette, you won't even feel like you're having lunch. So much of protein, it will fill you up. It gives you so much of protein that you can then you can cut down your carbs considerably. I have not been taking idli, dosa now for the last 20 years. I take a little fruit. I don't have diabetes, incidentally. So I take a little bit of fruit. I have a glass of milk with some seeds in it. And I take two egg white omelette. That's my breakfast. Very heavy. It will keep me going up to lunch. The carb is only that little fruit I have. And I'm taking because I have the antioxidants in it. And it's very, very healthy for me. So that's my pattern. I'm not telling you you should do that. You find out what is suitable for you and there's no one diet for everyone. Human beings, you can never satisfy with one diet or one exercise. It's your own pattern. So I'm not, I've never run a marathon, okay? But, you know, I've never, my weight has been steady for the last 35 years. In fact, I've reduced now some little more weight. I've never been overweight in my life. I can't remember from the day I was born till today. I'm 66 today. I've never remembered being overweight in my life. I've never done big, big exercise and all, but I do a regular exercise. I do my treadmill. I do a little pranayama. I'm careful with my diet. Uh, all that I do, okay? But I've not had big thing of going on zero carb diet and this diet. I've cut down a little bit. Oh, this seems a bit too much. We'll cut off a little bit here. We'll add a little bit there. That's been enough uh, for me. Is reversal, reversal possible? Eminently possible if you're overweight. So if you're overweight, type 1 diabetes reversal is not possible, okay? Type 2 diabetes in the early stages, reversal is possible. In pre-diabetic stage, we have reversed. We published papers on that, showing that you can publish. By bariatric surgery, you can reverse. By going on low-calorie diet, you can reverse. Uh, by cutting down carbs, you can reverse in early stages. But if you've already gone 20 years, your C-peptide is gone, and now you try to reverse, it is not so easy to reverse. Everybody talks about reversal. If you go to the net, every fellow is telling you, eat this leaf, I'll reverse it. There are fellows who say, you come to my program one week, I'll reverse your diabetes. Come on, if it's so easy, then why are we even talking about diabetes? Everybody go and reverse it and India will be, have no diabetes in, uh, you know, in next uh, six months, you can get rid, in India rid of diabetes. India's diabetes is going up like this. It's climbing, 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 climbing. After all the reversal of all the gimmicks we hear about, don't believe uh, too much of a reversal talk. It's difficult. I w I'm not even bothered about reversal. I want people to live up to 100 with healthy, long life, good quality of life even outlive their non-diabetic counterparts. That's what I want. I'm not saying, oh, I reversed 500 people, you know. So what if I reverse 500 people? I want all my, five, uh, you know, 5 lakh people to live up to 100 years of age, with, despite having diabetes. And I've got proof for it. I've published again and again. I come out and say, here are my next uh, 50 people who cross 90 years. Here are my next 100 people who are now 95 years old. Here are two people who cross 100 years of age. They're all doing well. 
that is a proof of the pudding ultimately proof of the pudding is in that not how many you reversed and how many again a gold medal you got reversed how, how do you know you won't get it back you think it's gone forever you put on 10 kg it will go back again you start your carbs again it will go back again so i don't want temporary answers i want permanent uh, solutions okay so i think we have covered all the questions i didn't want to disappoint the audience who are waiting for a long time doctor sorry i, I, I missed out on uh, sorry yeah. i missed out on the second half of uh, dr chandrakanth's uh, question about uh, you know dehydration Uh, so yeah. i make sure that i um, i uh, take enough of electrolytes and even if that means you know taking salt um, i will do it because um, i i don't want my uh, you know because of low sodium or low bp for me to uh, fall down or anything so i uh, yeah it. that that's what i do yeah i want you to tell us something about your blue circle diabetes foundation yes so uh, blue circle diabetes foundation uh, is a registered non profit organization and uh, it is started and run by people living with diabetes people um, um you know uh, with all types of diabetes because uh, you know we want to be inclusive i have friends with type 2 i have friends with type 1 um and a, a lot of the things that we do help uh, all types you know diet exercise is useful for everyone so we are a support group we are a non profit we run a, a diabetes and mental health helpline so it's there on the blue circle diabetes app um it's called the buddy project and um, all of our buddies are trained people who are living with diabetes as well so that is one of the things we do um and you can always check out our website um it, it blue circle dot foundation um take a look follow us on social media as well there's a lot of workshops we conduct um fun activities that we do so we want to keep people engaged and involved wonderful i must congratulate you on that and uh, you must write about this i would like to you know uh, invite you to write a blog uh, for us a about yourself about your own life and what all you have done more of a human interest story and second about the blue circle foundation we want to write more also please send us and we'll be happy we've got a huge following on uh, uh, on our website as well as on our yes. social media uh, our facebook uh, no our uh, yeah facebook now we have 105000 followers on in yes. our hospital uh, so they will all be happy to to hear you so please do that um your uh, uh, what are your ambitions what are your future plans what do you want to do um <laughs> uh, i mean i want to be able to make a uh... yes <laughs> Oh uh, actually doctor I'm not very sure and even when we started the uh, blue circle I didn't have a very uh, you know definite plan but I just knew I went along with the flow and uh, you know it might sound like a bit of an anti climax but I went where life took me and I think it's taken me to great places so far so you know I keep the faith and keep going wonderful wonderful yeah uh, I think that's that's it the, what is meant to happen Uh, will happen, and once you believe in, and also it's all about passion. And uh, if you if you do what you like, uh, then you never get bored, and there's always something new to do. And life opens up with new doors being opened all the time, and then you enter there and you find two more doors opening up. And then uh, sometimes you don't don't plan anything. See, when when we started our center, I left my father after 20 years working with him, starting a small clinic, just two rooms, three rooms, my wife and I. and we thought that's it that's our life and people even told us that's the end of you you know your father had a big institution you came now you are in a small place to think even at condolence meeting and all some of my students even have condolence meeting with me what's happened to you sir you are ended up like this you know you are in a big institution from there to 48 branches 32 cities 500000 patients i never even dreamt that it will happen i never planned it even it just happened it just happened god takes you along and uh, if it happens it happened didn't happen didn't happen suppose out of the 48 branches all the 48 went away so what that's okay we'll start again all over something else to do so that means something else is meant to, to be happen with at the end of 20 years and as my father is at my peak i had really built that institution my father brought it to real peak and then like you left your job one day i just said no let's go and we want to do something else and so we left and we had no plans or no money we had nothing and that's what my autobiography is all about and i hope to publish it in uh, in uh, february yes. when that uh, comes out uh, so uh, so that's that's how life uh, takes along and i think yeah. i want to take a second back. doctor yeah tell me yeah uh, i i really i mean uh, i i 
I really cannot uh, thank you enough. I mean, I really greatly admire. Uh, I mean, today we are talking, but even all these years before, uh, when I didn't personally know you, but you know, I could. Uh, I mean, I would follow you on social media and other places. I, I there's there's something to be said about the kind of personality that you are as well. There's a certain grit and a certain uh, perseverance which I think is required to succeed for anybody. so even for uh, all of my friends with diabetes all of us um, it's that grit that keeps us going right i mean unless and until we persevere we might have the best of technology and tools but if we don't have the will to push and succeed uh, we won't really reach there i i mean i actually i was thinking about this last night doctor when uh, you know we were uh, coordinating for the interview that we'll be having with you soon as well i mean i was really um, truly mind blown because even even at like 11 o'clock at night you are totally i mean you're on the game you're um, you're you're just i mean there all the time and it uh, hats off i mean there are people half your age who might not be able to cope up with the amount of things that you're doing so it's really admirable and i'm uh, you know it's it's a privilege to be here thank you so much i think it's all god's grace and as just said if you love what you're doing why am i doing this now i mean is it to get famous and to get thing and nothing like that it just enjoy it see how many people i never expected so many people with type 1 meeting type 1 is a rare disease and uh, uh, we don't even know to call it a disease disorder rare disorder and here are people you know how many people with type 1 on this one show you know inspired by you you know telling you oh she can run she can do this she is doing a running a foundation she is connecting with type 1 she is motivational speaker she is able to write she is able to talk she is able to do everything her hb1c is 5.5 she is using a pump she is brought it down no hypo she is managing a diet she is doing this doing that so subconsciously we are telling people yes we can also do it so i think that's that's what it's all about inspiring people and telling them that yes it can be done so when you see somebody you know we 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 look up to them you no know, when i was very young i used to you know when i started with my father when i was 18 so when i was 20 you know i'll go with him to attend some conference and i'll hear somebody you know from from mumbai dr rd lele dr kg nair all these great speakers come uh, dr uh, you know dr nk mani was then there and then he came to chennai i used to hear all of them and say one day i want to speak like them no i must also be able to talk like them so then you know then from childhood you're inspired you know seeing certain people um and so if that inspiration we pass on to somebody else then all that we have done all our life is carried on by somebody else the baton is passed on and then we have inspired and touched the lives uh, of others i think that's what it's all about that's what you're doing that's what i am trying to do and um, and that's why i wanted to get in touch with you and say when you find people doing good work why not we come together then the power i am not competing with you you are not competing with me but we come together imagine the power that we can do how much more we can do to people and there are a lot of people out there who who don't have any any support anything that's why you know foundation like the hinduja foundation are coming in and supporting those people otherwise they would have been, you know talking about 5.5 there are people who come down below 11% a1c they'll be very happy you know they are they're struggling to bring it they were 15 now they come to 11 they're celebrating when they come to 9 and all is like big thing for them you know so they'll be they won't even believe you if you say 5.5 and all do they think by the time i come to 9 i'm getting hypo see somebody said 40 and uh, 800 and uh, and 400 and so on uh, so that's how people are but then we can always uh, help them out couple of other questions have come probably we'll take them then when can stress increase blood sugar level absolutely manoj the way if you have both for type 1 as well you can even produce diabetes leave alone and one classy example is covid due to the fear of covid they get diabetes due to the steroid use which is a stress you get diabetes and uh, if you do pranayama and you reduce your stress your sugar can come down like that it can just come down okay dr tushar uh, chudiwal best wishes autobiography oh thank you A real Bharat Ratna, not quite Dr. Shah. I appreciate that. Thank you. Waiting for the biography, uh, Mega. Well, it's coming. I hope so. Thank you. Malini Saxena, son, 13 years old. He's taking two eggs and three chapatis. Is it good for him? I can't say that. Well, it's good or bad for him. It depends on whether uh, he's not diabetic. So yeah, the growing child, 13 years old. I don't think that's too much uh, for him. He's growing, and that's a growth spurt. 
So, I mean, I, I can't say from this program whether that's good for him, bad for him. We'll have to see whether his weight uh, spurt is okay. I don't know his weight. You're not told me. If he's putting on too much weight, maybe a little less carbs, more protein. Uh, the eggs are good. It gives good protein. It's good. Uh, even if he's taking the yolk at 13, I don't think it matters at all. You should take it. I, I would say generally good. Keep the protein up and then let him do exercise. That's very important. You shouldn't put on weight. So, you should do exercise. Uh, Ruchika Kathuria feels good to be a diabetic. Ah, great. Wonderful. That's nice. Feels good to be a diabetic. I wish you, you know, you popularize that. You should, you should tell people. People are actually hiding themselves. Oh, no, I shouldn't tell. Nobody should tell them. What is it? Is it a, you know, stigma? It is nothing. Did you get it because you did something wrong? No. You didn't do, did you sin and get it? No. Is it a punishment? No. It's a condition which everybody has. Type 2 diabetes today is 25% of Chennai, Mumbai population has diabetes and Delhi. At age 55, I was just talking to some uh, a group of senior citizens uh, before this. At age 55, 60 in Chennai, Mumbai, Delhi, and so on, 50% have diabetes and 25% have pre-diabetes. So 75% of the population at that age, at 55, 60 years, have diabetes, pre-diabetes. Show me many families who, who are the, their people are above 50, 60, and show me how many don't have diabetes. It's very rare now. They become so common. So if three out of four are having diabetes, is, what's the what's the big thing to hiding it? It's not a you know infectious disease or or anything. There's no stigma, nothing attached to it. Take care of yourself. Take care of yourself. As I said, live a long and healthy life. Become a model and become a you know role model for others. And then show through your life that because of that, I made it big. You know. Because that is what inspired me to do that. If I didn't have it, I may not have motivation. Because I had this, I want to prove that I can I can do that. And that is where you break barriers. All the glass ceiling is all broken. Now you set yourself free. Even the sky is not the limit. Even the sky is not the limit. You know, what is sky? Sky is nothing. You can go much, much, much beyond that. People are going to Mars, they're going to moon, they're going everywhere. So why should we not uh, be why should we be held back by anything? Diabetes or anything, AIDS, nothing. Nothing should hold you back. You have only one life and that life runs by very, very fast. I still feel I'm in college. By the time I've gone gray hair and, you know, gone to wrong side of 65. Now, so while you have it, do it. Whatever you want to do, do it. And today is the best day to do it. Uh, so, uh, Nupur, there's a question for you. Rohan Arora, what is your time and range? So, I aim for at least 70%. Um, and, uh, I mean, of, of course, be, because I'm type 1. It must be 90%, I would say. Yes. So, doctor, um, I'm also going to, I'm also uh, clubbing both the questions. Uh, the next one as well. Um, um, Shirisha has asked, what is the highest and lowest sugar? So, I keep my time and range uh, from 70 to 120 mgdl. Um, now, that might surprise a lot of people. Uh, but I have uh, several days when I'm even 100% time and range. I have zero hypo and zero hyper. And I consider hyper over 120. So, uh, of course... <laughs> Because yeah, I have a dysfunctional, yeah. yeah. I mean, because I have a dysfunctional pancreas. Range from yeah. seventy to one forty or seventy to one eighty, as it is. You are hundred percent in range. Yeah. Yes. Hundred percent in yeah. range. Okay. So yeah, so she's not getting hypos also, Shisha. So she's not getting hypos. She's not getting hyper, and she's adjusted her dose, her diet, her exercise, and so on. Uh, do that. So somebody wants to know: uh, with intermittent fasting, do you have hypos in the morning? No, I make sure to test my basal thoroughly. And uh, since basal is the foundation of, of the uh, insulin regime, I am spot on with my basal. And uh, if your basal is set properly, there's no scope for hypo or hyper. Yeah. I, I mean, of course, uh, because I have type 1 diabetes, there'll be some days where I do uh, naturally get hypo or hyper as well. But um, those are very rare. I, I don't always go into hypo in the morning. Always, you know, 5% will go this way, that way, because even the food you take, uh, may not be digested in the same way every day, number one. Number two, the flow of the insulin may not be 100 It's a machine, and so may not be 100% the same. Sleep patterns can vary. If you don't sleep, your disturbance can come. We cannot guarantee that every day you'll sleep 100% perfect. So those things uh, can can vary. Uh, so And the testing itself, it's not the Libre gives you 100%. Many of those gives you low readings, not really low at all. We know that also. Uh, so there are there are a lot of factors. And so in general, if you're able to maintain it, the other thing is, uh, you know, you calculate for all these things. One day what happens, you have a little diarrhea or a little upset tummy. That time if you forget to lower your basal dose, you had it. 
you will get your hypo immediately so you must keep that in my oh, head diarrhea let me now cut my basil some people forget to do that then you will get a severe hypo and will will knock you out the more you are aware of it and the more you are looking into all these factors then you have a near uh, normal life and a near normal sugar so it's i don't know how one and a half hours uh, ran by you know poor we started at 7 uh, at 8:30 and i've never really had so many questions i mean it's getting better and more and more people are, are joining i think this uh, is the ninth program i think we're doing and uh, i think your inspiration is is really really good and um, this will now remain in both uh, for for viewers uh, for this will remain both in youtube as well as in facebook uh, for both in the hospital facebook my personal facebook the hospital youtube my youtube everywhere it will remain and i'm sure many many thousands of people Uh, will be seeing this program uh, nupur you are truly truly an inspiration to everyone and i have no reason to tell you this i have no reason to flatter you i don't need to get anything from you but i honestly feel that people like you are truly an inspiration continue to inspire people you have got a long way to go and there are many 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 more milestones which you have to achieve you can truly become a diabetes champion you can become a leader and you can become a teacher uh, which you already are and uh, there are lots of things to do the uh, india is looking forward uh, to you all the people with type 1 diabetes or even other children with type 2 diabetes also uh, are all looking forward to you so i wish you all the very best and uh, my best regards to your family and as i said do the phd Uh, something related to type one. There are hundreds of topics you can pick, and you should uh, do your doctorate uh, in this, uh, which will be something which will be very good for you. That's uh, thank you small, so. Small, thank uh, you so very much, doctor. In fact, uh, big thank you for giving uh, T ones and and other diabetics like us a platform to you know share our thoughts and uh, our ideas. A big thank you to you. I really, truly, from the bottom of my heart, appreciate all that you do for all of us. um and uh, i think it the the support is mutual i mean uh, the community is there and i take support and inspiration from them and i give it back so that's what's happening so stay safe and uh, look after yourself and look forward to more such programs uh, i look forward to coming to you i'll give you a date i've been trying to find a date i'll find one soon and then uh, we will offline we can discuss that yes uh, thank you all for joining you have been a great uh, asking so many questions so many of you uh, came and uh, you know participated in this thank you for encouraging us this encourages us to do more for me to find time in my busy schedule is very very hectic but uh, still i feel that uh, the encouragement that all of you are giving uh, eggs me on to uh, to do more such programs and people like uh, nupur uh, make it really worthwhile so bye bye and until next time Good night. Bye. Thank you all of you stay safe. Bye bye.